Let's talk about case. Cases refer to words that have a particular function within a sentence. As you know, we have in the English subject, verb, direct object, and usually in that order. In Greek, we have the same thing, but the order the words appear in a sentence can be jumbled, can be any order. So how do you know when there is the subject of the sentence versus a direct object? When well, Greek, you determine the word's function in a sentence by its case. All cases have case endings. Below, you will see the same word with various case endings or suffixes attached. Case endings are suffixes attached to the stem to indicate the word's function and form in the sentence. Now, there is a scholarly argument as to how many cases there are. They see two different systems, an eight-case system and a five-case system. In the eight-case system, it's more a function, whereas in the five-case system, it's more a form. I'm going to be using the five-case system, which includes the nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and vocative. In this lesson, we are focusing only on the nominative. According to Daniel Wallace, the author of Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics, the nominative case is a case of specific designation. He says the Greeks refer to it as the naming case. It named the topic of the sentence. Each English learner should understand the nominative case as the subject of the sentence. The subject of a sentence either acts upon something, is acted upon, or is described. It is important for you to know that the nominative case in Greek is the workhorse of all cases. It is used 31% of the time. While it would be easy to say only nouns form the nominative case, this would not be a true statement. Most elements of a sentence can be used as a nominative or the subject. What do I mean by this? An adjective working as the subject of a sentence can be used. A, a verbal noun can be used as the subject of the sentence. A prepositional phrase can be used as the subject of the sentence. So how can we tell the difference? It's within the case ending that allows us to know the function and the form of words. The nominative or the subject of the sentence must agree with its verb. If the verb is singular, then the nominative must be singular. If the verb is plural, the nominative must agree with its plurality, so it must be plural. So remember, the number reflects the singularity or the plurality of the verb. Before we define the term gender, you should know the Greek language is an inflected language. Grammatical inflection alters the word depending upon its function, number, and word classification. When we classify words in Greek, words are placed into two major classifications. We call them declensions. One of the declension classes is considered the vowel or the gender declension class. Words ending with a stem vowel falls into the vowel declension. The vowel declension is further subdivided into two gender-specific declensions known as the first declension, which is feminine, and the second declension, which is masculine. These are considered grammatical gender declensions or classifications, which does not necessarily reflect the biological or natural gender of the subject or object of the word. What do first declensions look like or feminine the feminine declension look like the first declension words are those whose stem vowel is either alpha or eta words classified as first declension are grammatically feminine greek words whose stem vowel is omicron are classified as masculine or neuter. Once again, this is a grammatical gender and not a natural gender. What's the difference between a grammatical gender and a natural or biological gender? A grammatical gender simply falls into the classification as indicated above. It doesn't specifically mean that the word is 
feminine or refers to females or refers to males. For instance, city is often designated as a, uh, with a feminine word. But that does not mean that city is feminine biologically. Sin is considered a feminine word. It doesn't mean that sin comes from females. Often pronouns are gender specific. They point to either male or female. Now I did mention the second declension refers to both masculine and neuter words. Neuter words are often abstract like light is an abstract word. The second major classification of declension are those words whose stem ends in a consonant. That's considered a third declension word. We're not going to look at third declension words in our exercises for a while. So don't put your arms around third declension and declension words until it's, it's absolutely necessary words. Now let's look at some examples of first declension words and second declension words. As you look over each word now sort it according to declension and gender, I want you to keep a lookout for a couple of elements. Notice the underlined word. This is the singular nominative article for the declension you are viewing. If you are looking at the masculine singular nominative, the article is ha. If you're looking at the feminine singular nominative, the article is hey. And when you're looking at the singular neuter nominative, the article is ta. Also notice the highlighted vowel. It is going to be different depending on the declension. What you should notice is that when we are referring to both the masculine and the neuter, both masculine and neuter words use the omicron as the final stem vowel. So what should be the question that's in your mind? How do you know the difference? One of the quickest ways to know if a vowel is neuter or masculine is to look at its definite article. Also, the case ending would differ depending on if it's masculine or neuter. And we haven't gotten into the actual case ending to actually see it in its neck form. You'll notice that with the masculine, sigma finalis is going to be at the end. And with the neuter, you'll notice the new at the end of the word. One last note, the neuter form within the singular nominative form is also the accusative or direct object form. Put it in the back of your head. We haven't gotten to accusative. We're ready to look at the case endings. You've seen them all along. Let's look at the second declension. We're going to talk first its singular form, then its plural form. Let's concentrate first on the masculine. Notice in the singular form, the masculine case ending is the sigma finalis. In the plural form, the masculine plural, plural nominative is the iota. So that attaches to the omicron. Let's at, look at the other second declension noun, which falls into the neuter category. Remember that the neuter also uses the omicron as its stem vowel. The case ending for the singular neuter noun is the new. The case ending for the plural neuter nominative is alpha. Did you expect to see the Omicron and the alpha together? You know what? You're, that's, that's good because that's exactly what I would expect too. But um, the alpha actually trumps the Omicron. It absorbs the um, Omicron as the weaker vowel. Uh, so you're left with only the alpha. Let's talk about the first declension. Those are nouns that has the stem vowel ending in either an alpha or an eta. In the singular feminine nom nominative form, there is no case ending. In the plural nominative feminine form, an iota is attached directly to the vowel.